everyone, welcome back to Tabernacle of God Church Online. We're so excited to have you joining us for our Good Friday service. I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to my husband so he can go on and explain what we're going to be doing tonight. On a night like today, Christians around the world are celebrating a really unique day. And we call it Good Friday. And it's a, it's a weird statement for some people because what we say is Good Friday is remembering something bad that happened. And the bad that happened is what happened to Jesus. But because of all of that happened to him that day, something good happened. In fact, he did it for our good, even if it wasn't good for him. And that's why we celebrate it. And that's why Christians, ever since the crucifixion and the resurrection, celebrate that act, that amazing selfless act of love that God displayed for all of humanity, doing the impossible and doing what was necessary so that we can receive what we needed most. And so today, I just wanna give you just a quick reflection and then I wanna inspire you and encourage your family to take some time and to worship God and to really remember the cross and remember what he did because the cross and what we do is not just remembering what he did someday, but it's also remembering what we are called to do today and to live in response to the cross. But I wanna answer two really quick questions today. First off, this is a question that I've struggled with and I don't know if you've ever thought about this. Why the cross? I mean, why did Jesus have to die the way he did? In fact, we see in the scriptures that everything that happened to Jesus, in fact, including the cross, was on purpose. I mean, could there be an any other way? In fact, I'm not the only one who asked that question. Jesus asked that question. The night that he was betrayed, he actually prayed and said, Lord, if there's any other way that this cup can be removed from me, please let it be so, but not my will, but yours be done. And so we ask, why the cross? What does, because if, if Jesus was crucified, it was for a specific reason. In fact, the cross itself shows us our dysfunction on display. See, the cross was the most gruesome act and the most gruesome form of torture that the Romans ever had come up with. I mean, you can look it up yourself and to see, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna spare you some of those details, but I'm not, I'm gonna share a few others with you today. But it was such a horrific act that the Romans did it to intimidate all of their subjects. And they did it and they would put people on hills and they would put people there for days on end and they did it to show and to intimidate the world and to say, hey, listen, those who don't fall in line, this is what's gonna happen to you. I mean, it was horrendous and again, very gruesome. And it was our dysfunction on display. The, the fact that Jesus had to go through all that he did, and I'm just gonna give you a small taste of what he did. It was because our sin was that big of a deal. The sin, sometimes we think too less of our sin and we don't truly understand, I mean, what sin is. And, and Jesus had to go through all of that because our sin was that bad. Our dysfunction was on display. And what's amazing is this, we see, I'm going to read a couple of verses from you today. Right now, one is in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, where it talks about and prophesies how Jesus would go through all that he went through for a specific reason. Let me read you Isaiah 53, verses 5. Here it says this, But he who was pierced because of our rebellion, he was crushed because of our iniquities, the punishment for our peace was on him, and we are healed by his wounds. What amazing words. Isaiah saw and got a glimpse of what the Messiah was going to do 800 years before Jesus actually did it. Those words were penned hundreds of years before Jesus fulfilled that very prophecy. And there we see that his body would be crushed and his body pierced. But again, the punishment that he would receive was for our peace. Jesus received punishment so that we can receive peace. Here it even said that he was pierced for our rebellion. He was punished. He was punished for the things that we did. And he did it all for that amazing final statement when he said, by his wounds, we are healed. By his wounds, we are healed. Now, I wanna walk you through some of the wounds that Jesus went through because the reason why he had to go through all of that was so that you and I can experience peace and healing every single day, now, today, and forever. So one of the wounds that Jesus received 
was being was more not a physical one because he received an, an emotional wound before he experienced a physical one. He was betrayed by his friends. And I'm not just talking about Judas. I'm talking about all of them. All of his closest friends. I mean, Jesus was the most popular guy, probably. He was the most well-known person during that time. Everyone knew who Jesus was. And here, where the Romans would come and they were arrested him, where were his disciples? Well, we know that Peter tried to put up a fight. He took uh, a sword to defend Jesus, and he tried to lop somebody's head off and only was able to nip his ear. I mean, the aim of the guy. I don't know. But what was amazing is that just how Jesus reacted. Because right at that moment, he looks at Peter and says, no, no, not like this. Not like this. Peter drops that sword and takes off running. Him and everyone else. And so here Jesus is caused and led to face his accusers alone. No defense. His best friends. Those, where were the crowds now? Well, they didn't know he was being arrested in this way, but his friends did. No one came to help him. They abandoned him. See, Jesus experienced rejection because how many of us have experienced rejection? And that was one of the wounds that he went through. How many times have you ever felt and been treated unfairly? Have you ever been the victim of injustice? See, Jesus has. And he experienced those wounds so that you wouldn't have to carry your wounds any longer and you can be healed. Now from there, we're more familiar with a lot of other, uh, a lot of the other wounds that he experienced. One was his tongue. His tongue experienced swelling, probably because of all the dehydration and all the things that he was physically, the, I mean, the, the, the torment that he was going through. And it was his tongue that experienced punishment, but yet it was our tongues that have spoken curses, hateful things, right? Harmful things. How many times have we ever spoken any forms of negativity, spoken lies? It was our tongues. Now, and I'm not even talking about the things that we've said out loud. All the things that we've said in our hearts and in our minds, under our breath, that counts too. Yet Jesus experienced that wound on his tongue for every wicked thing we've ever said. The other ones are more, the more pronounced ones. I mean, this one was probably a, a gruesome thing to have experienced uh, physically, was all the lashings that Jesus took on his back. Jesus took, I mean, by the end of the beating that he took, his whole back was completely exposed. Whether if it wasn't completely cut raw, uh, down to the meat, in fact, probably some of even the bones might have been exposed. Now I want you to imagine that picture and then now picture him on the cross, crucified. See, if you were, uh, if you were crucified in order to breathe, you had to pull yourself up on the cross. And now imagine trying to do that and trying to rub your open back up against all the splinters that were there on the cross, on the wood beam that stood behind him. See, Jesus took that beating and that punishment on his back for every single burden and baggage that you've ever, ever had to carry. Every single one of those that we've, all the baggages of wounds and all of those things that we've had to carry on the burden of our backs. Jesus took his wounds on his back so that we can be healed from those. The other ones were the crown of thorns, which is one that was uh, you've probably been very familiar with, and the crown of thorns was very difficult because, see, they did it to make fun of him. This is a, a dual thing here. The crown of thorns was done to make fun of him. They were bullying Jesus at this point. And they took this crown, all oh, he's supposed to be the king of the Jews, and they took this crown, and they didn't just put it on his head to make fun of him. Then they took sticks and they beat that crown of thorns into his skull. See, that what, oh, why did he have to go through that? Again, because his, by his wounds, we can be healed. If you've ever been bullied or made fun of, if you've ever been abused physically, and especially for every wicked thought that we have ever had, Jesus took that wound for our punishment. He took that wound for our iniquities, for all of those things that we've done, that we've experienced, so that we can be healed. And then there was the nails. Jesus took nails in his hands and in his feet. Why? Because it was our hands that have committed murder. It was our hands that have committed, you know, atrocity. It is through our hands that we've sinned. And it is the, the wicked paths that you and I have walked, right? That was why. That was why Jesus had to experience that wound in his hands, in his feet. For everything that we've ever done, 
and for every wicked path that we've ever walked. And then the final wound that Jesus took was actually one that he was already dead when he experienced it. At this point, at the final end, they wanted to check to see if he was dead because there was a lot of crazy things that were happening on that night. And one of the Roman soldiers took a spear and pierced his side. Some say possibly even puncturing his, the, the, around his heart right in there. But see, Jesus didn't die because he was stabbed. He was already dead at this point. And in fact, the medical, medical doctors will show and they talk about how the separation of the blood and the water, which was a result of that, showed that Jesus was, had already passed away by that moment. But he took, he took that side, he took that spear into his side. Why? Because it was our hearts that were full of sin. Our hearts that were full of sin. Yet he took that punishment there so that by his wounds we can be healed. But you know what's amazing too is that final detail. He took that spear into his side. Now he has this open wound on his side. Do you know who else experienced an open wound on his side? Adam. In the book of Genesis, God leads Adam to fall asleep and he opens his side and takes a rib out and from there he creates his wife, Eve. Well, on the cross, Jesus took a wound in his side and God didn't just remove a rib now, okay? Because of that open wound, because of that open wound, now the bride of Christ has been made and has been made possible, which is the, the church, it's you and I. And that's in that amazing moment. Again, Jesus went through all of that for one reason and one reason alone. So that by his wounds, we can be healed. Last text of the day. And then we're going to play a song that I want you to just to worship God and thank him. And I'm going to pray during that song, as that song plays, I believe that a lot of your wounds are going to be healed. That's my prayer that supernaturally the wounds that you've experienced, whether through sin, whether the things you have done, whether the things that have happened to you, that you are going to experience healing. Because again, Jesus didn't want to just forgive you. Yes, he wanted to do that, but he wanted to give you something. And in fact, the cross is an amazing gift also. It's a picture of his ferocious love for us. I want to read from the book of Romans chapter 5. Verses 6 and 10. And I want you to hear these words from the Apostle Paul. And he says this. While we were still helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For rarely will someone die for just a person. Though for a good person, perhaps, someone might even dare to die. But God proves his own love for us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. How much more than since we have now been declared righteous by his blood, will we be saved through him from wrath? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, then how much more, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? And see, that's what God wanted to give us, is not just forgiveness, but he wanted to give us life. And that eternal life is not something just for another day. That life is meant for today, right now. See, Jesus experienced that temporary separation from his Father on the cross so that you and I who place, their faith, place our faith in him would never have to experience eternal separation. That's the gift that God wanted to give us. That's the gift of the cross. So I want to invite you to pray and join me in prayer. Let's play that song. And as that song's pray, playing, I'm going to be praying for you. I'm believing that God's going to do something amazing. And I want you just to surrender it all to Him. Surrender every single wound to Him so that He can heal you. And let's just worship God for that amazing gift. But let's pray. Lord, we would just want to honor you right now. And we want to remember all that you did for us. God, we thank you right now because the cross is such a amazing picture, God. It gives us a true understanding that we were greater sinners than any of us can ever realize. Yet, Lord, it shows us that we are more loved than we can ever imagine. It shows us to the extent of your love. And God, right now, I pray that we may just re respond right now to that love, that we may reply right now to that amazing love of yours in worship in surrender in awe. God, may we just take everything to the cross right now. Our burdens, our, our wounds, our fears, 
You said, those, if you're tired and weary, come to me. If you're hungry, come to me. All of our needs, we can bring them to you. Everything, God, we can find at the foot of the cross, which is the throne right there of grace. We can experience mercy for yesterday and grace for today. And so, Jesus, I want to just praise you right now. Thank you that heaven came to earth. Thank you, God, for your amazing sacrifice, for the gift of eternal life. Because none of us could achieve it. None of us could earn it. Only you could. And you did it. So we thank you, God, for your love. And we bless you right now. And we honor that sacrifice. Join me in worship right now as we just express your love to his amazing love. Reply to that love of God.
There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't lock down, lies you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. so much for that love, Lord, that brings us life. And God, I believe that right now, Lord, all of those people who have been bringing you, bringing you everything right now to the cross, I believe that it is through your love, God, that you are healing and bringing life. And through your wounds, Lord, you are bringing healing to every wound that any of us have ever experienced. And so, Holy Spirit, I ask right now that you seal what you're doing right now in your presence, Lord. We, we cast out and we reject all that the enemy has done. And we say right now, we say right now that though the past might may remind us of our faults, though our past may remind us of where we have messed up and who we used to be, God, may we reply to the enemy. When the enemy comes at us with our past, may we tell them, no, our past might remind me, but it does not define me any longer. It is my Lord Jesus who does. It is your act, Lord. It is the life that you give me that now matters. And that is the life that we hold on to. And so we thank you for your, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your love. And we thank you, God, that that love still, still, still is present right now. We bless your name, Jesus. And we thank you. In your name we pray these things. Amen, guys. So today, as for the rest of this night and even this weekend, up until Easter, think about the cross because the cross shows us that, man, God took our worst, yet he gave us his best. And it's an amazing picture for us. And so in the same way that Jesus laid down his life for us, I want to challenge you this weekend. How can we lay down our lives for others, whether it is our family, our spouses, parents, kids, one another? That's what the cross now demands of us. That's what it demands of us. How can we love others the way God loved us? And we know how he loved us. He laid his life down for us. All right, so before we log off, we want to give you a few next steps, which is actually only one, and it's a very important one, is join us on Sunday for Easter Sunday at 9 a.m., right from the comfort of your own living room. You can catch us on Facebook Live, or if you check out our website, which is www.tabernacleofgod.church, there will be a button that you can click and it'll take you straight to YouTube to check us out on YouTube as well. We can't wait to see you guys then. Till then, God bless you guys. Bless you guys. Share that link also. God bless you guys.